This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Profit. Let's do that fast, yeah. As we begin the event, I would request our guests to come forward and pay tribute to the goddess of knowledge and wisdom, Mount Saraswati, by lighting the lamp. Marketing is everywhere. Marketing is a major function. Marketing drives the economy. Marketing actually creates the middle class. past, chief marketing officers or CMOs focused on traditional roles, simply marketing and not anything more than that. It was up to the CEO or the chief executive officer to perform the larger role of attracting a customer base and retaining existing customers. Clearly, no longer. Marketing as a function is moving away from the outskirts to the core of the enterprise and the division of responsibility is clearly changing with the role of the CMO evolving and becoming more and more complex. Hello and welcome to this very, very special panel discussion. Today we discuss if the CMO is the next CEO. Let me now introduce our very special panel that we've uh, got lined up for you today. Let's start by introducing, of course, world-renowned marketing guru, Dr. Philip Kotler. It's such a pleasure to have Dr. Kotler with us. Also to my left, uh, Mr. Anil Rai Gupta, joint MD of Havels. Uh, Sandeep Kataria, CMO of Yum Restaurants, also joins us. To my right, Alok Bhardwaj, Executive Director of Canon. Uh, Kumar Sachdev, uh, MD and CMO of Sukam, joins us. And Rajat Jain, MD of Xerox India as well. On the evolving role of uh, Chief Marketing Officers uh, and a wonderful audience, of course, to support us and ask those questions. But let me start by first getting an insight uh, from none other than Dr. Philip Kotler on what chief marketing officers need to do to become true business leaders to proactively evolve their role. Now, that's obsolete, this idea that marketing is only one P. Uh, it's four P's at least. So it's product, price, place, and promotion. By the way, I've added some. <laughs> it's about time. I added, first of all, I would like uh, to add public relations. Now, with social media and with the need for your company's reputation to be known about, talked about, and excited, uh, exciting the audience, you need PR as another tool to build into your marketing mix. So it's now product, price, place, promotion, and PR. Um, I'll say more about that later, but the idea of a chief marketing officer is finally taking us into the idea that marketing is proactive and responsible for your future, not simply offering you some assistance. In a great, uh, a chief marketing officer should be the one who identifies your best opportunities, calibrates their size, and takes you into those opportunities smartly. In other words, I'm not even talking about advertising. I'm talking about building your future. So I'm talking about strategic marketing, not tactical marketing. And strategic marketing is more about what product should you be making than what, how, you, how you're supposed to sell the existing products. You know that's more important that you figure out the right products to make for the right people you should be reaching than the idea of selling whatever is made. How much of a role is technology playing in, in the evolving role of marketers? Well, we're beginning to distinguish between uh, the old marketing and the new age marketing. Um, the question is, do you stay only with your 
five, your, your main media, which is newspapers, magazines, radio, TV, and billboards, or do you give it all up, take 100% of your budget, switch it to new age media, social media, both would be errors. It would be an error not to get into the use of social media. It would be an error to oh, put no. all your money in there. Take 10% of your budget, hire some really good young people, let them play with it. Let them use Facebook. Let them use, uh, see what they can do with Twitter and, and so on, YouTube. And in fact, if it really is producing results, it may take some time to know that, then give them 15%, but creep up rather than throw a lot of money that way. Frankly, in the future, I really believe this, 50% of your budget will be uh, in, new, in social media. And would you like to define but future? That's five or 10 years from now. Five to 10 years from yeah. now. I now ask Mr. Anil Rai Gupta if he believes that chief marketing officers themselves realize their own importance and their changing role. Are they doing enough to elevate their own stature? The ideal CMO in good organizations would be a person who's, uh, you know, who's taking the customer insight, who's involved with the customer, who's involved in the distribution channel management, who's also involved into sales management, and also taking you know, the other departments like finance, IT, production, in, and influencing them to make sure that they deliver the right product to the customer after taking all the insight. With all these things, if, if the CMO or the organization is doing that, then probably the CMO is ready to take up a CEO role at, with the right training, with the right kind of input. Your observations are fantastic about the differences in different industries, but the main thing is that uh, I want the CMO to be a Steve Jobs or Richard Branson. Right. And if you can put into your role, your CMO, that kind of mentality, creative, then let the brand work and brand support be done anyways by, by your, your group. Do you think there's over expectation from the CMO simply because of those marketing budgets that are earmarked? And also, the, the under expectation in terms of the role the CMO can actually move on to. So while the career is short, but the mindsets don't change quickly enough for them to realize that the CMO may actually perform a very, very critical role within the organization. In my business, in the restaurant business, there's a sixth one for us, which is people. people. Uh, for us, the people in the business really, really bring the brand to life. They're probably the most important touch point for us. Yes. And therefore, as a CMO, one of the roles I have is to be the chief motivator, to be the person who's actually able to talk and get my brand to live with each of my team members in the restaurants. But it's your brand that makes the promise. And so you're hiring and training your employees to live the brand. All right, integrating brand strategy along with the overall business strategy, how difficult is that? One of the biggest challenges that I think as a CMO that they face is to handle this whole change management. And uh, as uh, we just talked about one very important responsibility of a CMO is to also be a custodian of future destiny of an organization. And if that be one of the big responsibilities, then uh, this naturally can only happen efficiently and effectively with some changes and transformation. Uh, whether it is uh, with regard to even organizational processes in the form organization has been used to be handling media, or even the way organization has been handling PR. Uh, almost every aspect of the touch points, therefore, need to be re-looked at and re-examined. To challenge the status quo becomes a very important, vital part of the responsibility. Would you like to add to that? Well, uh, yes, I would just say that uh, many companies have to redesign themselves in this new age, all the functions. And the fact is, it's very hard to run a business and keep redesigning it. We always say that when you're flying a plane, you can't also be redesigning the plane. Um, yet, most companies would admit to the following, that they're not organized in the way they would, should be if they could start again because a, a, a business is a legacy thing. You've already implanted and done things, and, and so, so any business is obsolete to some extent for the job it's trying to do. 
And how you keep in reinventing yourself as a business is a, is a, a real challenge. My question now, in fact, to Kumar is that do, we, do you increasingly feel that we define the term marketing very loosely? Is it because it is now becoming broader and broader, or is it, is it a term that, that's referred to very loosely when we, we talk about a number of functions? I would like to clear here that I am not a marketing guy. Everyone's a marketer. Everyone's a marketer, <laughs> says Dr. Cutler. <laughs> so, you know, I'm learning. You know, we do uh, keep experimenting, and I'm learning a lot. Because initial days, I thought product is important. Technology is important. Now, as Sandeep says, that I have learned that people are the most important thing. Sure. What marketing is, is the, abil it's the ability to create customers. You're not a business if you can't create customers. Create and keep and grow. Grow the wa share of wallet of the customer, as a matter of fact. So it, to me, is the most important function of a company. Marketing makes us more aspirational. It, is, it shapes our aspirations. Right. It shapes our idea of what we want. And so a market driving firm, is, 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 like Steve Jobs and others, is, is creating lifestyles. Dr. Cutler, I'd like to take forward a particular point that you made that everybody is a marketer. Uh, this is a very, very significant statement coming from somebody like you. Do all business leaders need to believe that they are marketing? The CEO and the CFO, they have, to, they have their own markets. Right. Their, this, their market is really the investors and the owners and getting their support. If that isn't a marketing job, I don't know what is. Uh, you make impressions on other people, and you should be hiring people who are very skilled, especially when you put them in the marketing department, in knowing how to be persuasive and, 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 and good. Raja Jain, how tough is it to really market a product that may be losing relevance? I think it is important, uh, you know, as we are living in a dynamic world, to ensure that you change with time and therefore understanding your consumer, you know, being close to the customer, having customer insight, you know, believing in the power of research and continuously sort of, you know, shaping that is important for you not to become, you know, irrelevant. And I think therefore, uh, the, 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 the role for a marketer is to ensure that the products and services that you're selling continue to change in tune with the changing consumer, perhaps a little bit earlier than the customer changes and you're able to anticipate the change that's coming. This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV Profit. request uh, some of the panelists uh, if they have any marketing insights that they want from Dr. Cutler. I represent Canon. Yes, Canon. And you're with Canon. Cameras and digital cameras are one category. The smartphones are making our life very difficult. Have, I think one job of the CMO is, is, is precisely to be the person who, who starts looking at the whole product mix and saying, this we can phase down or out. This is okay, keep it going. That is our future right there because companies generally don't look at uh, systematically at their product mix and figure out where they stand. Right. In fact, there's defenders of the old products out of sympathy with the old products. They, they grew up with them and they want to keep them in the mix and they're not going anywhere. Very often one is faced with this dilemma of how far to extend the brand or stay close to the knitting. Yes. Um, a case in point that I'm struggling with right now is we are, I run the KFC as the marketing. Yes, yes. How far should we go? Yes. Um, should I go all the way into vegetarian? 
Mm, I see. Yeah. Should I go into beverages? How far? Yeah, yeah. Can I take it? How far can KFC travel as a name? Certainly it should stay within the food area, food and drink area at best. Uh, you're not going to make a car called F KFC. Uh, it would be interesting, but you'll sell only one. KFC probably wouldn't do well outside of the food category. What about uh, just coming back on this question, you know, on brand extensions? Does trust play a role in, uh, you know, creating the brand to go and transcend into many other categories, like Mitsubishi, for example? Mitsubishi was in cars, Mitsubishi Electric, just went into so many categories, and just the trust on the brand brought customers back to various categories in the business. Yeah, I think you're 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 right that uh, uh, trust is so important. Uh, some joker said, but and it's especially good if you can fake it. Uh, but I'm not on that side of, of doing it. Uh, it's so hard to build trust and so easy to lose it, right? I run Xerox for India. Is that the brand has become generic to photocopying. And how do you transform such brands which have a history of being something in the old age or old world and digital and everything else has changed the future but the brand is still understood by billions of people as something that's, you know, 30 years ago. Brands becoming products or products becoming, I mean, the, well, the lines getting blurred there between yeah, the brand yeah. and the product. And sure. there are several cases. Xerox is clearly a classic one. Uh, yes. Like cellophane is used by, as a word, but it actually is owned by DuPont Absolutely. as a name. Exactly. And, and yet, uh, now in, in the case of Xerox, I, I, do, I still do it. I say, get Xerox get that for me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's good because you're getting a lot of mentions, but they're not using it as a Xerox machine to do it. They're yeah, using... They're using Canon machines to zero. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to say, would you canonize that for me? Exactly. <laughs> that Xerox should have been the, one of the biggest, biggest companies in the world because there was a outpost in California where Xerox was inventing everything that others did. And Xerox didn't do it. Palo, Palo Alto Research Center. The Palo Alto Center. operation. They had such a brain trust yes. that... They just neglected that because you were making so much money just with the machine. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. All right, I think we're going to now throw open the questions, uh, get questions from the audience. Where do you think marketing discipline in its life cycle? Marketing oh, discipline? Marketing in its life cycle? Yes, marketing I think discipline. that's the question. The marketing discipline, the function, the marketing function. Wow, wow. Uh, I, I don't in its life cycle. Yeah. Um, I think marketing is not like geometry, which was unchanged for 2,000 years and would bore me to tears to teach. Uh, it is, it's unpredictable where marketing thinking uh, and the field will be later on. Maybe it will be absorbed into a larger idea. Maybe it, it I, can't, I can't say that it's toward the end of its life cycle. I wouldn't even use the word life cycle to talk about marketing that way. What is the actual career progression we must build in making up this CMO so that he naturally takes over as CEO? My perspective on that is for a CMO to get to the corner office, you know, it's important to go through perhaps, you know, another step which gives him a lot more operational exposure, some degree of uh, you know, commercial understanding which is deeper than perhaps the creative function that he currently runs. So there is a little bit of distance and therefore building, you know, leadership skills, building commercial skills uh, is very important beyond, you know, the skills that a classical CMO may have. With social media transgressing, consumers take a lot more control of their decisions and listen to other consumers, both share their views and take decisions based on real life experiences. Do you see a, a risk of marketeers losing control and being less relevant in the age where consumers are really contacting each other directly? The brand is owned by who's talking about it. And they're talking about it more than we are as the brand owner. So the control has already moved in the hands of the customers. That's why, uh, so what you're saying is is does that diminish the role of the marketing people since they're losing control? Well, even in losing control, the marketing people must monitor the talk. They must go on Google Alert and put in their own 
company name and the competitors' names and hear the talk. Now, the best thing would be to hear only favorable talk when it's peer-to-peer -peer conversations. That would be perfect. You know, everyone talks about it and loves it. The next uh, thing would be maybe no talk. At least uh, then you still have a lot of control because no one else is shaping opinion to, of others. Uh, the worst thing is, is to have a lot of bad talk and so on. So how, the real question is, when you are monitoring the talk and hear bad things, how do you work fast? So someone added another P. They said pace, the speed at which you can work, the, the speed at which you can respond to hearing that there's some bad talk going on. And, how do, you, how do you not mess it up when you start interfering in the wrong way and, and then the newspapers say you're, you're trying to stop some things? You know, I don't know. It's a brand new challenging world. It is a challenging world, but, but Dr. Cutler, if I could just add to his question because it is an interesting one. While the role of the, of the, of the CMO or the marketer has become more difficult in an increasingly digitized world and social media playing a part, how, what... The, the other way to look at it is also the opportunity that it presents. So supposing there's a hotel that's obviously not doing a good job and it's got terrible reviews, uh, but you've got the marketer who's got it right there. So the pace, the P that he's talking about, it's right there. You can see it and you can know what's wrong with your brand and improve on it. Also, if I were to add my experience as a customer, if I've got a hotel where the manager has not responded to a bad review, I will not go there because he obviously doesn't care enough. So the opportunities that a marketer has because it's becoming an increasingly digitized world. And you also don't have to pay for a lot of expensive research. Yeah, absolutely. It's research right there. Exactly. I think that's a very, very important point that earlier you would go and do these, uh, you know, get these research reports on how your brand is being viewed and now it's, it's out there with all the reviews. I'll tell you what, this that digital world means is you cannot be a bad company anymore. Right. You can't make money in a bad way because it will be caught and talked about and everyone will know that that's not the kind of company we want to deal with. So you're going to have to be uh, in the fishbowl uh, and, and, and everyone's watching you in that fishbowl and, and, and wondering. So that leads to another thing. Don't you think that your reputation is now something you must manage more carefully? Sure. And to manage your reputation, there's, there's another level at which you can manage it, and that is to become a caring company, to become a socially responsible company. So what might have seen, been seen as using the profits that you should give to the owners and the investors, but you took some of it and and gave it to the, Amer the cancer fund. You gave it to good causes. Right. Maybe now, I know in Sweden, you cannot be a company that operates without being very socially responsible. They wouldn't, no one would buy from, no Swedish person would buy from a company that isn't caring. That's going to happen here, too. All right. It's been a very, very interesting, fascinating discussion, absolutely. Uh, is the chief marketing officer the next CEO? Well, perhaps uh, the answer seems to be yes, because as Dr. Kotler has told us, uh, everyone is marketing all the time, and marketing as a function is becoming increasingly more important. Thank you all for joining us in this very, very uh, interesting discussion, and thank you for being a wonderful audience.